Part 1 Jack is on his way to Margaret's house party. He is phoning her for directions. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Jack has got lost on his way to Margaret's party. He is phoning her for directions. Hello, is that Margaret? Yes, who's speaking? Margaret, it's Jack. I think I'm lost. I can't see a signpost and... Jack, so where are you now? Well, I'm a bit confused about the directions, but I'm at a T-junction. What can you see around you? I can see a pub on the corner. Can you see the name of the pub? Wait a minute. Let me see. It's hard to see in the dark. Yes, I can read it now. It's called the Lion's mm, Head. Oh, the Lion's Head. OK, well, then you're not too far away. Go straight ahead through the traffic lights to the next T-junction. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you say? I said, just go through to the next T-junction. OK. Now what? Well, there's a park in front of you and a large two-storey building on the corner. Ah, yes, I can see them. OK. So now turn left. Hang on. You're coming up the street, so you'll have to turn right. OK, got it. What's the name of your street? It's Wesley Street. W-E-S-L-E-Y, number 70. We're the fifth house on the left. You should see a red letterbox and some bushes in front of the house. Okay, fifth house, number 70. I should be there soon. Am I late for the party? It sounds like things are happening there. No, it's only just started. That's good. I should be there in the next ten minutes. See you soon. Jack hangs up and walks on. Seven minutes later, he calls Margaret again, as he still can't find the house. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. As you listen, answer questions 6 to 10. speaking. Hi Margaret, it's Jack again. Sorry to bother you. Listen, would you mind doing me a favour? Of course, what? Could you tell Mike I have got his camera? I've tried to send him a text message, but it's not going through. Oh, he's not here yet. Oh dear, he said he'd be there early. He might be lost too. Okay, I'll call him. What's his number? 0482 563379. Oh, so that's 0485... No, no, 0482 563379. OK, I'll call him right away. But where are you now? Well, I'm in your street, but I still can't find your house. I can't see the numbers very clearly, or a red letterbox. It's pretty dark. I thought you said it was easy to find. Oh, OK, wait there. I'll come outside and get you. All right, then. And don't worry about calling Mike. I'll try to call him now. Hang on, there's someone coming down the street. It looks like Mike. Oh, and I can see the letterbox now. It was hidden behind a bush. See you soon. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. Two.
You will hear part of a podcast for visitors to the popular holiday region called the Trelaw Valley. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen and answer questions eleven to fourteen. The valley and estuary of the River Trelaw forms an unspoiled, beautiful landscape, rich in both wildlife and sites of historic interest. There are many ways to explore the area, and public transport links are good. It is possible to leave your car behind and travel by boat, train, or bus. With just short walks in between stops, the Trelaw Valley Passenger Ferry runs between villages along the river estuary, and provides a link with a train station at Barry, which is about ten minutes' walk from the riverside village of Calton. In the past, the river was the main form of transport in the area, and as in the past, today's ferry service operates according to nature. The river estuary is tidal, and so the ferry timetable differs from day to day, according to the times and height of the tide. The ferry is also seasonal, normally running between April and September, depending on the weather. A timetable for the whole year can be downloaded from the internet by visiting www.trelawferry.co.uk. If you just want to sit and relax and enjoy the lovely scenery, you can take a river cruise to Calton and back from the nearby city of Plymouth. In the past, steamships brought early tourists along the same route. Queen Victoria and her family enjoyed such a trip in 1856. The journey is quicker these days. The round trip takes between four and five hours, depending on tides and weather. If you prefer, you can travel upriver by boat and return to Plymouth by train. All cruise boats and trains have wheelchair access. For more information and for departure times, ring Plymouth Boat Cruises on zero one seven five two eight two three one zero four. Trains run several times a day throughout the year between Calton and Plymouth, with various stops in between. They are used by both local commuters and tourists who want to enjoy the beautiful scenery. The highlight of the journey is crossing the river on the stunning viaduct, which was built at the beginning of the 20th century, and towers 120 feet over the water. It is unnecessary to book, and tickets can be bought on the train. For information about fares and timetables. Contact National Rail Enquiries by phone or online. The bus service in the Trelaw Valley now connects all train stations and villages in the area. Especially for holidaymakers, there's a Rover ticket which can be used at weekends and on national holidays, and allows unlimited journeys on those days. The Rover ticket provides great value for money and is now even cheaper than it was last year. An adult ticket costs five pounds fifty a day. Senior citizens can travel for four pounds fifty, and a family ticket for up to five people costs just twelve pounds. Tickets can be bought on the bus. Now you have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions fifteen to twenty. 
At the center of the Trelore estuary area is the historic riverside village of Calton. The main road comes into the village from the south, and for those of you who are arriving by bus, it turns left just before the bridge and stops in the lay-by on the left-hand side. From there, it's just a short walk to Calton's various attractions. If you're arriving by car, you have to leave it in the main car park. Go over the bridge and take the first turning on the right. Then go on until you come to the end of that road. It's the only place to park in Calton, but there's no charge. If you're interested in local history, there's a museum in Calton with farming, fishing, and household implements from the late 19th century. As you come in from the south, cross the river and go straight on the same road until you reach the end. Also, on the subject of history, you can go and see the old mill, which has recently been renovated and put back into use. Turn left before you come to the bridge, then go straight on and then take the first turning on the right. This leads straight there. If you're interested in arts and crafts, there's a potter's studio where you can watch the artist at work. After crossing the bridge, turn left and it's the second building on the left. Finally, when you feel in need of refreshments, there's a cafe opposite the old boathouse and a picnic area near the mill. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. We'll hear a discussion between three students, David, Joseph, and Carrie. In the first part of the discussion, they will be talking about lounges in different school buildings on campus. First look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen to the first part of the discussion and answer questions 21 to 24. Hey, Joseph. Long time no see. How's it going? Oh, hey, David. It's going fine. I'm a little overwhelmed with all these new courses, but I'm hanging in there. Have you met my girlfriend, Carrie? No. Hi, Carrie. Hi, David. Joseph told me about you. You two had quite the time last semester in European history, I hear. Yeah, we like to hang out after class. Now it's a little harder, though. Lounges aren't as good as they were back there in Wilson Hall. Yeah, they had chairs, couches and tables to put your stuff on. And that lounge was full. There must have been 25 seats in there. Really? The lounge in Jones Hall, where I have my communications course, only has about ten chairs. It's awful. We all just stand around or leave. I wish we could hang out more. Well, Agriculture Hall is next door. Their lounge is on the first floor, and it has couches. I think there are about six of them. And they're comfortable, and hardly used at all. That's not a good idea. Thanks. But don't go to lounge at Skidmore Hall. I don't even know why they call it a lounge. It's just four chairs in the corner of the main walkway. In the second part of the discussion, David, Joseph and Carrie continue talking about conducting a survey. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Guys, we should really do something about those lounges. I mean, couldn't we gather signatures and try to get the university to improve some of the facilities? Yeah, that's a great idea. But we can't just say something random like, oh, you need to make the buildings nicer. We should come up with some kind of ranking system and have students rank buildings, how beautiful they are, how nice they are, etc. Well, if we were ranking on a scale of one to three, you all know that I would rank Skidmore Hall a one. Like I just said, that place is awful. No facilities. The bathrooms are way down in the basement. You're right. But they do have a nice balcony on the third floor. That might increase its value. But you shouldn't rank the architecture. You should rank how nice the building is for students to hang out in. Oh, OK. Then I agree with you. So should we do this? I think it's a great idea. But let's try it ourselves on a couple buildings so that we can work out any bugs in it. I think Wilson Hall is the best. Sure, but we've already begun. We will give a building one point if it has poor facilities, not enough chairs and no vending machines, that kind of thing. And give a building two points if it is OK or acceptable. We can rank buildings that we really like as having three points. So like Joseph said, I think Wilson Hall is the best. It should have three points for sure. And Skidmore has a one. Now what other buildings should we rank? How about Merris Hall? No, they're not done with that one yet. But it looks like that will be a good place to hang out. How about Agriculture Hall? You said something about that hall a bit earlier. Oh yeah. They have that lounge with couches that no one uses. But that might indicate that people don't hang out there for other reasons. They don't have any drink machines. That's why I never go there. Oh, well, then I think it's an average building. Let's give it the middle ranking. I agree. It could be improved slightly, but it's got a couple of nice features. I like that lounge in that third floor, for example, but the stairs are too short. I always trip when I'm walking up them. This ranking is getting complex. OK, one building we haven't talked about is Canton Hall. What do you guys think of Canton? Is that next to the law building? Yep. It's got this excellent connecting corridor with chairs and desks to relax and work at. The cafeteria there is great too. I think that place is just as good as Wilson. Well, I've only been there once and didn't know that was what it was called. It was kind of confusing and it's kind of far for me to go. But I liked it. So I'll give it the middle ranking. Two points because it had nice facilities, but a poor and confusing layout. Oh, Joseph, you like Canton Hall? I hate that place. It's so mechanical, cold and impersonal. The furniture is nice, sure, but it's the last place on campus I would go to. I give it a one. Interesting. Well, let's write this little survey up and start passing it around. I don't have time to type it up. Can you? Sure. I'll do it after my biology class. Should we meet up at Wilson tonight around 8? Sure. No problem. We'll see you then. That is the end of part 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. Listen to an interview. Mr. Brooks, Mark, Jean and Robert are being interviewed on the subject of friendship. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I consider friendship to be one of the most important things in life, whatever your status, married or single. I see too many lonely people around. A lot of us get so involved with material values, family problems, keeping up with the Joneses, etc., that we forget the real meaning of friendship. Which is what, according to you? They say a friend in need is a friend indeed, which is partly true. But a real friend should also be able to share your happy moments without feeling jealous. A good friendship is one where you can accept and forgive him, understand mood, and don't feel hurt if a friend doesn't feel like seeing you. Of course, honesty is an essential part of any relationship. We should learn to accept our friends for what they are. As a married man, do you find your friendship is only with other men? Of course not. Both my wife and I have men and women friends, thank goodness. Although family life is fulfilling, it isn't enough. Both my wife and I get tremendous satisfaction from our friends, married or single, male and female. And we both have our separate friends too. We'd get bored with each other if we had the same friends. You must have a full life. We certainly do. And as I say, our friendship gives us a lot of pleasure. After all, friends should not be people with whom you kill time. Real friendship, in my opinion, is a spiritually developing experience. I've never had a lot of friends. I've never regarded them as particularly important. Perhaps that's because I come from a big family, two brothers and three sisters, and lots of cousins. And that's what's really important in my family. If you really need help, you get it from your family, don't you? Well, at least that's what I've always found. What about you, Jean? To me, friendship, having friends, people I know I can really count on. To me, that's the most important thing in life. It's more important even than love. If you love someone, you can always fall out of love again, and that can lead to a lot of hurt feelings, bitterness and so on. But a good friend is a friend for life. And what exactly do you mean by a friend? Well, I've already said, someone you know you can count on. I suppose what I really mean is, let's see, how am I going to put this? It's someone who will help you if you need help, who will listen to you when you talk about your problems, someone you can trust. What do you mean by a friend, Robert? Who likes the same things that you do? Who you can argue with and not lose your temper, even if you don't always agree about things. I mean, someone who you don't have to talk to all the time, but can be silent with, perhaps. That's important, too. You can just sit together and not say very much sometimes. Just relax. I don't like people who talk all the time. Are you very good at keeping in touch with your friends if you don't see them regularly? No, not always. I've lived in lots of places, and, to be honest, once I move away, I often do drift out of touch with my friends. And I'm not a very good letter writer either. Never have been. But... I know that if I saw those friends again, if I ever moved back to the same place, or for some other reasons, we got back into close contact again, I'm sure the friendship would be just as strong as it was before. Several of my friends have moved away, got married, things like that. One of my friends has had a baby recently, and I'll admit... I don't see or hear from her as much as I used to. She lives in another neighbourhood, and when I phone her, she always seems busy. But that's an exception. I write a lot of letters to my friends, and get a lot of letters from them. I have a friend I went to school with, and ten years ago she emigrated to Canada. But she still writes to me every month, and I write to her just as often. That is the end of part four. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers.